Hey, what's up guys? This is the TP-Link Deco X20. I'm gonna unbox this thing. I'm gonna do some speed tests and different configurations, so wireless backhaul and wired backhaul. I'm also gonna do some range tests with this thing, and I'm going to be using my Pixel 5, which is my Wi-Fi 5 device, and my iPhone 12 Pro, which is my Wi-Fi 6 device. So, this mesh Wi-Fi is compatible with Wi-Fi 6 and previous wireless standards. That's why I'm going to be using both of those. And it has a speed rating of AX1800. Now that's not the fastest, but it's not a bad speed. And it covers up to 5800 square feet. Granted, take that number with a grain of salt because if you live in a house with a lot of walls or thicker walls, or if you're in a building with a lot of walls and other interference, other routers and stuff, all that stuff is gonna hurt this range. So, what is a mesh Wi-Fi system and how is that different from a normal router? So a mesh Wi-Fi is really designed to be a dead, a Wi-Fi dead zone killer. And the way it does that is, there's a good picture in the back. If we were to compare a normal router, you, let's just say one of these, and, and I should mention that a mesh Wi-Fi is really two or more routers or a router and an access point, basically two or more devices that connect together to create one single network. That's really what a mesh Wi-Fi system is. So if we were taking a router, basically this, and I brought my phone and I was here, let's just say, it, I would connect to this and I would be good. And basically the circle that they drew is showing just around how much coverage I should expect. So I would connect and it would be okay. And as I would walk farther away, assuming these two were not here, so covering those two, as I would walk far farther away, my Wi-Fi bars would get lower and lower, and essentially I'd get to a point where it would definitely slow down and it would get to a point that it would cut out. So I might get to the garage and I might not have any Wi-Fi coverage. So what a mesh Wi-Fi does is it really solves that issue by connecting two or more devices. So in this case, we have three and they basically talk to each other and create a single network. Now they can talk to each other wirelessly, which is called wireless backhaul, or they can talk to each other through wired backhaul, which means there's an ethernet going from here to here and from here to here. And you can also mix and match as well. This could be wired and these two could be wireless. So all of that is fair game. So it's basically designed to increase Wi-Fi coverage. So the other cool thing about TP-Link is it does come with parental controls and it comes with some sort of antivirus. Uh, well, typically routers in general come with firewalls and offer some protection. And it also has quality of service, which pretty much is standard for most routers. So let's open this up and see what's inside. And if you guys are wondering, so this is the Deco X20. I've reviewed the Deco X60, the Deco X68, and the Deco X90. I'll put links in the description below for that. Those are all basically higher models than this. This is pretty much the lowest of, of that family line. So I believe all of these are routers, which is good because you can actually just connect one of these if you wanted to. And you know, you can actually basically buy a three pack and you could use one and you could give one to someone else and you take, and then someone else could take another one too because technically each one is a router. So when we look at the ports, it, ha it comes with two gigabit ethernet ports and there's the power and pretty much, that's pretty much it. There is a little reset button on the bottom to do a factory reset and you're good to go. And the same is going to be true with this one and this one as well. So these three are identical, which also means that it doesn't matter which one you connect to your modem and which ones are the ones that are connecting to this. So if you want to choose this one to connect to your modem, that's fine. Or this one or that one, because they're all basically routers. And it's pretty much going to be the power stuff, I would imagine. Okay, so it comes with instructions. It comes with an ethernet cable. Sometimes these are cat 5 e sometimes they're cat 6. They both support gigabit, so it's fine. It doesn't say if it's cat 5 e or cat 6. There is an, a quick installation guide in here. In fact, let me just take this out so you guys can see it. And if you guys are interested, I can do a 
how to connect this, how to set up video for this. And basically three of the power connectors. And this is 100 to 240 volts, so it pretty much should work in most places. And it's pretty small. It's actually much smaller than the Deco X68 power. And can connect, okay. And basically two other power supplies. All right. It's been a few days since I've unboxed this thing and I wanted to see if there were gonna be any drops in connections or anything like that and so far so good. Now I did all the speed tests and range tests so I have all those numbers here again with both the iPhone 12 Pro Wi-Fi 6 device and Pixel 5 Wi-Fi 5 device. So getting into this thing, my internet speeds are rated at 980 megabits per second download and 880 megabits per second upload. So that's relevant for the internet speed test that I did. And again, the speeds are rated in megabits per second, not to be confused by a megabytes per second. One byte is equal to eight bits. So 100 megabytes per second would be the same thing as 800 megabits per second. Doing the internet speed test with my Wi-Fi 6 device, I got 760 down, 250 up. And with my Wi-Fi 5 device, I got 457 down, 232 up. Now you could see a drastic reduction in speed, especially between the Wi-Fi 6 and the Wi-Fi 5 device. And you could also see a reduction in speed between Wi-Fi devices and something that's hooked up via Ethernet, like my computer. Because when I do the speed test with my computer, I pretty much get right around with my ISP is providing. Sometimes, most of the time, it's a little bit less than that, but it's right around there. So now to isolate the router by itself, starting with my Asus ET8 video, I've been doing local speed test servers. Now what that does is that pretty much gets rid of the variables like my internet service provider, my modem, and it also gets rid of the public speed test server that multiple people and or companies could be using at the same time. So this isolates the router. To be consistent with all my other Mesh Wi-Fi videos, I'm going to use the same option numbering scheme. So starting with option one, that's when I use a router by itself. So just because I get a two pack or a three pack doesn't actually mean I need to use all three. I could just use one. In this case, since they're all technically routers, I could pick any one of the three and hook it up and I'm good to go. So I hook up one of these two ethernet ports to my modem. It doesn't matter which one because they're auto sensing. And then the other one I hook up to my computer or I could hook it up to an unmanaged switch if I need more ethernet ports or, or any other ethernet device that I wanna connect it to. So in this case, when I do my speed test, again with my same devices, with the Wi-Fi 6, I get 821 down, 631 up, and with the Wi-Fi 5, I get 692 now, 560 up. So you can see that there's a drastic increase, at least in the up, from the upload, definitely, there's a drastic increase in speed over a local speed test versus an internet speed test. I should also mention that no matter how fast your router is, if you're accessing the internet, you're limited by your internet service provider's speed. So how fast my modem or ONT is working, that's how fast I can access the internet. Or if your modem or ONT or whatever is faster, let's just say you're paying for gigabit service and you get a router that can't go as fast, now you're limited by your router. So I always recommend getting a router or mesh Wi-Fi that's faster than what you're paying for, for internet. So move, skipping option two, because option two is when I get a router and a dedicated non-router, like an access point or extender or satellite or a node, I'm going to skip option two because these are all technically routers. So I'm gonna jump into option three. Now, just because they're all routers doesn't mean they're all gonna act as routers. Only your main one is going to act as the router. The secondary one is going to act as an access point. And the TP-Link, the Deco app, this does that automatically. This is not something you need to worry about. When you connect it, it does it automatically. Okay, so option three is called wired backhaul, and that's when I hook these up to each other via ethernet. It could also be called Ethernet backhaul. Now, this is basically the same thing as option number one, where it's hooked up to the modem, you're good to go. 
except now you add a secondary one which increases your Wi-Fi coverage and you hook these up to each other via Ethernet. Now you could put an unmanaged switch in between these, that's also fine, so it could go from Ethernet to switch to this and that's also considered wired backhaul. So, and a question that I get asked often is, can I hook up the switch to my modem first and then for my switch go to all three? And the answer is no. It's not gonna work the, th the way you think it, that it's gonna work. So you always wanna hook up the router or the mesh Wi-Fi first directly to the modem via ethernet and then after the first one you can hook up a switch and then from that switch you can go to the to the other two in this case that's fine so as long as the router is hooked up to the modem directly that you always want to do that first okay so with option three when i do the speed test and i do the speed test on the secondary one so if this is my router and this is my main one i do the speed test on the secondary one with that, I pretty much get the same speeds as option number one, which is what I would expect because this is going to give you the best possible connection. And option number four is called wireless backhaul, which is basically the same thing as option number three, except you remove the Ethernet in between them. So this is hooked up to your modem via Ethernet. This is your main router. This one you go, let's just say, one or two rooms away and you plug this in and you're good to go. So this wirelessly talks to this and still expands your Wi-Fi. So when I do the speed test on this, I get much slower speeds. I get 350 down, 231 up, and 282 down, 213 up. So much slower speeds. Now you're wondering, okay, well, why is it so much slower? Well, the reason is because this is a dual band system. So you don't really have a dedicated third band that is acting as the wireless, dedicated wireless backhaul that's not being shared. And some mesh Wi-Fi use a combination of all three to do this, but basically these only have two bands, a 2.4 gigahertz and a five gigahertz, which is being shared with all your Wi-Fi devices. So you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get great wireless backhaul speeds on the secondary one. So, Another question that I get asked is, if these are hooked up to each other via wireless, can I use the Ethernet ports on the secondary one? And the answer is yes, you can do that because again, it's still one network. Just like when you hook up to your Wi-Fi name, when you connect to your Wi-Fi name or SSID or network name, whatever you want to call it, when you're walking, when you're closer to this one, it'll automatically connect to this one. When you're closer to this one, it will automatically connect to this one. So the same principle applies if you hook up an Ethernet device from this you're still going to get connection to the uh, connection to your network, except you're gonna be limited by how fast this can go. Whereas when you hook up to the main router, you're gonna pretty much get the full speeds. When you're hooked up to this one, in the wireless backhaul configuration, you're gonna be limited by the connection between this guy and this guy, which is pretty much gonna be right around these 350 download speeds that I was showing you guys. Range test time. Now range varies by location. So if you have thick walls, if you're on multiple floors, if you're in a building with a lot of other wireless interference with a lot of other walls, this is gonna hurt your range. Again, I recently moved, starting with the ASUS ET8 review that I did, I've recently moved, so I'm in a more open area, so I typically get a little more range than I used to with all my previous mesh Wi-Fi tests. So keeping it, keeping it in the same local speed test server, I start walking away from the main one that is hooked up via Ethernet, giving me the best possible connection. And at 20 feet away, there is a reduction in speed, but it's still pretty good speeds overall. At 50 feet away, I'm outside my place. There's stucco walls, there's a few walls in between. So again, uh, definitely a drastic reduction in speed, but this is something I would expect because again, I'm outside, I'm far away. And at 100 feet away, this is when I go across the street. And again, a much more reduction in speed. And right around 140 feet, this is when the Wi-Fi devices start disconnecting. And these are the speeds that I get. So barely usable at the speed, but just something to keep in mind. 
Now jumping on to the Deco app, the Deco app happens to be my favorite app from pretty much all the ones that I've used, or it could be in my top two, but I'm, I'm, I think it's probably my favorite. And the reason why I say that is because it's a very simple user interface, very clean, everything's there in front of you, there's no guesswork, there's no, oh, I need to uh, look through all these options or anything. It's, it's just very well thought out, very clean, very easy to find stuff. You also get parental controls that are included in the price. Now you might be wondering, aren't parent, parental controls included? Well, they are for this one and they are for some other ones like the ASUS, but for some other ones, you actually have to pay a subscription fee for them, which I'm not a fan of. I feel like if you're buying it, it should come included with that. So the TP link does include that, which is a good thing. You also get some antivirus options. You get some additional protections. Granted, with routers in general, you get firewalls and stuff, so you're already getting some protections in general, but you get some extra protections with this one. Now, moving on to final thoughts. Is it worth getting? Why or why not? Well, generally speaking, I recommend dual band systems for something that's going to be hooked up via wired backhaul or if you don't care too much about the internet speeds for the secondary one, if it's just being used in the garage for your security cameras to connect to it, then yeah, even a reduction in speed is still going to be fine. So if you're going to do wired backhaul or anything like that where you don't really care too much about the secondary ones, then this is a fantastic system. And the reason why I say this is because when you're close, you actually get really good speeds. Over wired backhaul, you get very good speeds. And range test still did fairly okay. I mean, it wasn't the best. It's not as good as the ACC T8 as an example, but it also costs much less than that. And you're also getting a three pack, although this also comes in a two pack and a single one if you guys want to do that. So you don't necessarily actually need to get the three pack. So overall, I think it's a pretty good system. It's clean, has a nice app. You do get additional features, including the price. And yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections below. Do you guys like this thing? And I'm also going to compare this to the X68, which is a basically a tri-band version of this. So I did get a comment. I got a few comments actually asking me to compare these. So I'm going to do that. So if you guys have questions or comments, or you guys want me to compare stuff, or just anything, just leave in the comment sections below. I do try my best to answer them. I do try my best to read them and stuff. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.